Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I thought today we would work on uh, scrap again. You know, I've shown you my scrap before. I've got bowls and bowls and bowls and bowls <laughs> of scrap. And all I end up doing when I make some of these uh, projects is just adding to my supply of of scrap. Now, I'm hoping you don't throw your scrap away. Now, there is some clay that if it's contaminated, um, and when I say contaminated, maybe you've got a bunch of stuff in it or dirt in it or you've added paint to it, things like that. But when it's just clean scrap like this, I think I'll add this in there. Um, it's very easy to convert that into something useful. So I'm just going to pick some of these similar colors. And if you remember this, this is the kaleidoscope cane we did. And there's several different ways you can do this. First, I'm going to chop this up. Doesn't have to be in small portions, but I'm just trying to break up some of these large pieces of clay. And what I'm going to do is do a Natasha technique. And there's several different ways to do that. So, like I said, this is my way of doing it. You might see it done differently by somebody else. But after you get your clay chopped up, then you want to smoosh it back together. And this probably is, it's cold because, of course, it's in my craft room and it's only 62 degrees in here, which would feel probably pretty good in the summertime. But I'm just going to try to roll it a little bit to flatten it out. And I'll roll this side because that side still has some spaces in it. But you just try to squeeze it until all of the air is out. And actually I'm trying to recondition this as I'm doing it because I, I'm going to want to um, twist this. And the re you know, and like I said, this is just something you can do with your scrap clay. If you don't want to use scrap, you can use regular clay. But what I like to do, I think I've got all the air out of it now, is I'm going to kind of roll it into a round. and squish it as I do because I don't want it to be very big. I'm still I still got this little ridge right here. I'm trying to get that smoothed out. Maybe I'll just push a little with my fingers. I'm getting closer to getting my room rearranged. I think another thing that I'm going to do is maybe move my camera up a little. Right now it's like right at my eye and nose level. And I think that's one reason that I have such a difficult time staying in frame sometimes. So I think if I go up a little bit and I, that way I can just zoom it. The only problem is going to be I'm not going to be able to see my screen to see where I am. And it doesn't have to be round. I was just going for that because what I want to do is twist this. And it's easier to twist a round than it is a square. And you just twist it and roll it. And you don't have, it's entirely up to you how much you twist it. The more you twist it, the more intricate your design will be on the inside, which is what's going to be your outside. 
Now I'm going to do a couple of things. Let me twist these ends a little bit just so they'll have some contrast. I'm going to cut this in half. And on this one, I'm going to try to make it flat on both ends. And then I'm going to flatten it. and turn this into a rectangle. And try to get it as even as you can. Now this is probably a little bit bigger than what I would normally do, but I, if I go any smaller, you're not going to be able to see what I do. And I will come in a little bit, so please forgive me if I come out of frame. I will try to keep it where it is. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to turn this into a rectangle bead. So what I'm going to do is try, excuse my hair, if it gets in the shot, I just want to, alright, and see there's the inside of your cane, and what you do is you put this together so that it mirrors it. Now, I really like that already. Can you see a dog in there? This is the eyes and the nose. and It's like a Yorkie, like my little Yorkie. So I may just keep this one the way it is. I'd planned on... Well, let me go ahead and do the other one, see what the other one looks like. Let me move that one out of the way. And I'll do the same with this one. just make it square if you do better you know you can use Teresa Salgado's square pairs they work really great but this was just a little big all right so there's that one and let me find the middle I think that's about it. And slice down. And let's open this one up and see what we've got. Oh, this one's even neater. Look at the difference in the two. This I probably didn't get twisted as much as this side but that is so neat but what I'm going to do since this one shows the design more I'm going to show you how to turn this into a square bead now you could flatten this a little bit but you realize when you flatten it it's going to distort it a little bit so find your seam which is like right there and then cut this in half and then cut this one in half roll these out turn this over and there's that side oh look that's got like a butterfly at the bottom of that Then take this one, turn your bead again, and match this one up. That looks like an owl. And then the back will also match. You just need to line them up. Just want to make sure everything gets stuck together like I said now this is a very a pretty tall one but this will leave a hole in the middle 
So you don't even need to make a hole. You just need to make sure everything is stuck together. Now, if you don't want a rectangle bead, you can turn this into another type bead just by pushing on these corners. Do it gently and alternate between the corners and bring these ends in just be easy of course you'll lose your hole which means there's going to be air trapped in the middle so you might want to push on the sides going up try to close this in as much as you can and then do the same thing up here take the opposite corners and pull them together opposite corners and pull them together and just keep doing that just do it slowly so your bead doesn't break And then you have a square bead with rounded ends. And then you can go even further if you wanted to square this, I mean, round it up a little bit. Just mash the corners in. course this is bigger than what I would normally do but look at that is that not amazing look at that bead there's one side that looks like an orchid to me of course I turned it this way and it looked like an owl I'm not sure what do I see in that one kind of looks like a monster And I got this one offline a little bit, so that it looks like a bow. And that looks sort of tribal. So that is one thing you can do with your scrap, is turn them into amazing beads. Now what I would do with this, and let me come back out a little bit. I would take a skewer and go in here on the end where the center of your thing is and I would go through and open up the center so if there is any air in there it will escape when you bake it but I think I'm going to keep this square on the sides I might even bake it on this just so I'll have it. So that's one thing you can do with your, this is called a Natasha bead. I meant to look up how it got its name. I was going to tell you about that, but I, I didn't do that. So this one, I like that just the way it is. I don't know that I want to make a bead, a long bead out of it. So let me see, this is a ring form that I have, I think what I'll do, and there's no telling what's going to be underneath, but I think I'm going to slice this, there's the inside there which isn't nearly as pretty as this one and I'm gonna mark this with my circle and 
And I'm going to see if I have a circle cutter that fits that. This is the one inch. It's a little bit small, but you know, I think because of the thickness, I'm going to use this. I think I'll put a little bacon bond if I can find it there it is <laughs> actually that's not the one I've got open where is my open bacon bond I'm almost there with my reorganization I think I'll just use liquid clay But you can use bacon bond. You can put weld bond glue in there if you want. But I'm going to place this in here. This is a ring form. And I believe it, it was a Sculpey ring form. I'm not sure. But I'm going to just round the edges down until it fits in this form. Then we'll take a piece of patty paper and put it over the top and I'm just going to rub it to get off all the fingerprints and to make it smooth. And I don't want to get more fingerprints on it so I'll just use the patty paper round in these edges again and there you go that looked to me that looks like a beautiful butterfly or the dog face it still looks I guess because I had a Yorkie this looks like a Yorkie face to me but if you don't have one you probably can't see it but anyway, so that's another thing you can do with your Natasha beads. Now, the good thing about this is I've got those two projects. I've got this scrap, and I'm just going to ball this back up. I'm not going to twist it or anything to, make, to mix it any because it's pretty finely done. And I'm going to do this again. So please don't ever get rid of your scraps. There's so much you can do with scraps. Do like I do and keep them. I try to keep mine segregated. I've got blues and greens and yellows in one. And I've got whites and blacks in another. But if you think about it, whatever I make out of this is going to coordinate with either one of these because they're coming out of the same color mix. So let's see what happens when I cut this one. spread it out and put it together I see another dog right there with floppy ears I must have dogs on the brain today which is un not unusual for me and again cut it into fourths and open this up And that goes on the back. And open this one up. And see, it matches this side. And then these sides will also match. It's amazing how that works. And again, I'm just going to use my acrylic blocks. 
Oh, I wanted to let you know, I found acrylic blocks at Dollar Tree in their craft section. They also had some great Hampton Art stamps that are uh, the color stamps, where the coloring stamps where it stamps a picture and then you color it. And that looks like a Martian now. This looks like two dogs. That looks like a dog, and this looks like a dog. This looks like a bulldog. This one I'm not sure about. And that one looks like some kind of a beetle or something. But these are just some things you can do with your scrap clay. And I hope you'll try them. Because you can make some amazing things out of just just scrap. And uh, I really like this one. It had just that little bit of black and red. Which I'm not sure how it got there. But I'm glad it was because it gave me that butterfly look. But you can accumulate these. You can make, you could take, uh, let me make, let me do one more. Um, I'll use the same colors. See how many more of these I can get out of here. This one I will chop up again. Just because there are some big chunks of solid colors in there. And then kind of press it all back together. But I wanted to show you the reason I use the same colors is you can take this, there's that reddish blackish color that became the butterfly on the other ones. I'm glad it's still some in here. But I'm just trying to warm this up so I can roll it. Or maybe I want, well yeah, because I want I need to twist it. Twisting is what makes the um, designs appear in your clay. I could cut this and it's just going to look pretty much like this when it's cut. But when you twist it, it adds some interest. And you can twist, like I said, twist it a little bit. Twist it a lot. And this is breaking because it's cold. You see, what the reason one turns out with more detail than the other is like the ends don't get twisted as much as this right here in the center. That's where you're going to get the most twist. So just be aware of your twist and make sure you try to get it twisted all the way to the end. Because this time... And here I will use my square pairs because I'm going to have a long I'm going to have a long one. Because what I'm going to do, if you want to use this as a focal bead on a necklace, I'm going to show you how to make other beads to go with it. And I will tell you, this is probably one that will go into my D stash. Even though I love these colors. 
but I am as soon as I can get my room as, I, as soon as I finish going through my room and I've got a couple of boxes and a couple of drawers in my organizer that I'm planning on de-stashing and as soon as I do that get everything finished and I've gone through everything I'm going to offer grab bags and things like this will be in my grab bags some may be baked some may be not baked it just depends on how far I got all right now that's getting a little bit too big so let's go to the next size whoops I dropped my little one You'll find with your square pairs, if you try to use one that's too large for your project, you'll find that they'll start folding in like this when you're squeezing and you end up they're not square. So when you can, you know, go back, go with the one that matches the size the most. All right, now I've done that, and as you can see, it doesn't look quite as twisted as it was. But I'm not going to worry about that right now, because what I'm going to do is cut this into pieces. I'll tell you what, let me use my Marks It tool, and I'll set it at the largest, the largest size is 15 millimeters. And press that in and then that'll give me a line and I will have even sizes and this is also made by Donna Cato she's created quite a few little tools I can't see this one that make working with clay so much easier And the marks it is one is just one of them. Let me show it to you. I don't think this is on my webs on my Amazon site because I don't know if it's on Amazon. But if it is, if you look up here, you'll see three millimeters, which is the smallest. And you just press this on the top of your clay, and it leaves these little lines, so you know where to cut. Then there's five millimeters, seven millimeters, ten millimeters, and fifteen millimeters and 20 millimeters so you can get pretty big with that but that is something that can help you get consistent sizes so let me see here what I'm going to do I'm going to make this into a little Natasha bead open it up match it up Cut this end in half. Cut this end in half. And then this goes on the back. And then this one goes on the back. That looks like Bugs Bunny with his ears chopped off. And always match up your sides. And what I'm going to do with this one and all the others, after I get it the right the same size on all four sides, is I'm going to do like I did the big one. I'm going to round these off. And these are small enough you can kind of do it at the same time. just bring these ends up and if you want to maintain your squareness you can go over it with this just don't press too hard
but there, there, there's now one bead that will coordinate with this. If you want to make, this one's got more green, I would do it this way. You could string them on something, and these would be your beads for your necklace, and this could hang straight. Now, I know I've got a rod through it, and that's okay, because you can hang another bead, like take one of these pieces, that were on the end, kind of open it up a little bit to because this is kind of solid on the outside. Roll around bead, or actually we probably ought to order roll a bead like this. I'm using the same pin because I'm I don't want to, to put two of them in when I bake it. And a good way to find your, make sure you're straight, go in about halfway from one end, pull your needle tool or whatever you're using out, this is a knitting needle, and go in the other side, and you'd be amazed, miraculously, they end up meeting in the middle. Don't know how that happens? But this is where you can refine your your shape. So you can bake that on the same thing, on the same needle as your big bead. And do the same with all of these. We're going to go back. For one thing, it's not square. Make sure it's the same size all the way around. Cut it in half and open it up. I like that center. And then cut this in half and cut this in half and fold them out. And then this matches up on this side. Remember, this is the front, and I'm going to turn it this way. And so the one that I turned, that I cut, will match up to that. This one looks like a bunch of flowers. But flatten it. Make sure it's square on all four sides. And then pinch your ends. Just keep pinching. Sorry for the silence. And then when you flatten this out, on all four sides, you'll have another bead similar to this one. And these will all be your filler beads. But it's just so much fun to see what you find when you open these up. I'm sorry, I just... This has got some sparkle in it. Look at that. I said I wasn't going to do all of them, but it looks like I am, aren't I? And this one matches that one. 
but I didn't cut these even so it's going to leave a little space but if you keep pressing make sure that the back matches up and then as you flatten it it will eventually fill in that space well, that's got a heart to make a good Valentine bead if it were red or pink And again, just bring in your corners. I'll just do one at a time this time. I was doing both. But it might make help you if you just do one at a time. So you're making a square bead in the center with a round top. Go to the other end and just pull in the sides. Just turn it and press and turn it and press until your ends come in the way you want them. Then re-flatten your sides. And now there's three beads that I've made. And see how quick that was? And they're all going to be different. You'll never have the same bead twice. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, it's something that anybody can do. It does take some practice. I will give you that. Because sometimes the beads, you, you get to a point where you can't match them up. And it's just because you've laid them down wrong. So if you just remember, step one, mix your colors twist it step two then if you want to cut a section off or use the whole thing then you cut down the middle and open it up put them together then cut each half in half And open them up then when you pick this up and turn it the top is going to match this one. Oh, that's pretty looks like a star and then this one when you turn it is going to match up there then match up your ends Flatten it together. And then pull in your corners. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Get out your scrap clay. Or if you, if you throw away your scrap clay, stop doing that. Find a little bowl or a tin or something that the clay won't react with. And throw your scraps in there and then when you're sitting down and you don't have anything to do and you say what can I make you can always make Natasha beads because they are awesome so everyone have a wonderful day a wonderful week and I will be back next Monday with another polymer clay video and I'll be back on Friday with Friday frolics bye bye